it's not live, so we're okay. Okay, that's good to know. <laughs> Here goes, Protect Our Province is a regular panel of doctors and experts who bring in timely, accurate updates on the COVID-19 crisis in Alberta. Kirsten Burr is a communications expert from, from Protect Our Province, and she joins us to take some questions. Good afternoon, Kirsten. Thank you so much for your time. Thanks for having me. Yes. When you say protect our province, could you describe what you do, what protect our province is about? Yeah, well, it started in the summer um, when, if, if you recall, there were uh, rallies across Alberta that happened. Um, in, there were some in Calgary and some in Edmonton and various cities throughout the province. And it was really a collaborative effort to um, come together to um, ask for better policy from our government. And at the time they were talking about canceling um, contact tracing and testing and um, isolation for, uh, for children in schools. And now we're back in that situation. But at the time, we were still. It was summertime, and we could still gather outside. So, um, it was a, a group of really diverse people from different backgrounds who just came together because they were concerned about the safety of children, essentially. Um, and then, after the rallies ended, we continued to do the online briefings because it was felt that um, the government wasn't providing the information that we needed and that, that the public needed in order to keep themselves safe and to end the pandemic, essentially. Okay. Um, thank you for that. When you say the government is not providing information to keep us safe, there is a lot to unpack there. Yeah. What exactly? What exactly do you do you mean? Well, I mean, frankly, uh, we've seen consistently, time and again, that we have taken measures like closing restaurants and and um, reducing people's access to shopping malls and churches and and different things like that. And just at the point when we are starting to succeed at reducing the spread of the virus, they decide always too early to, to reopen things and then things just spread again. And now we're in the fifth wave. And so it is probably not a surprise to most people that this, is, this has been a cycle that's been happening. And I'm not a scientist or a mathematician. Um, but the people, the very smart people at Pop Alberta have very good evidence-based information um, that shows an alternative way of doing things so that we can stop going through this cycle and just put an end to it. Um, so, I, yeah, sorry, go on. so the goal really is to fill in the information gap um, because we feel that the, the, um, the public health policy has really not been clear. It has been really confusing and inconsistent, and it hasn't been developed with the safety of, of everyone in mind. I, I hear what you're saying. And the first um, real maybe deep question I, I have is, when you speak to UCP, op UCP operators, if you say anything against anything they put out officially, they say you're part of the NDP. Is this what uh, Pop Alberta is? Um, something that the NDP has brought together to fight the government? Not at all. Um, it's a, a not political whatsoever. Um, and it's a, actually... Um, a conscious decision that was made that this is, while it's not, it is of course political because we are speaking out against things that it go against the government, but um, 
it's not affiliated with a political party. It's really just a bunch of people from a wide variety of backgrounds. Um, many are parents and grandparents who are just concerned about the safety of their children and their family members and who reached a point where it seemed like something more needed to be done. Do you sometimes feel sorry for the government because when they um, say, for example, recently um, that um, if you're double vaxxed, they you can you go on isolation for five days. It, it feels to me like they're pandering to a certain group of people. And when they make another kind of... Um, uh, policy it seems to me that they're just trying to make their base happy. So when you reflect on this, it feels like no government will ever get it right. So do you feel sorry for the UCP and the way they flip flop back and forth, just trying to pander to different sections of our of our society? No, I can't say that I do. <laughs> um, I understand that that's a difficult. Uh, spot to be in and I mean the world that we've been in in the last probably probably since Trump started tweeting changed communications and and political discourse in not always for the better um, because the public doesn't always know how to identify misinformation and I think that that has is part of the reason why we got into this situation where People no longer know who to trust and no they don't know who to turn to uh, for facts because there are so many different sources and opposing views and it's really hard to tell. So um, I suppose I could empathize with how challenging that that, that is. And, and I know that Alberta has a really diverse population and trying to um, you know reach everyone with the same message is a real challenge but I actually don't think that they've attempted to do that um, I think I think that they're by choosing not to be firm in their decision making um, They've really put a lot of people at risk and a lot of people have died unnecessarily. And I, th I think that that's, I mean, there's, there are examples of other governments in the world that have done a better job. So I would say, hmm, I mean, I empathize that they, they didn't plan on, you know, be having to deal with a pandemic but I also really don't think that they've made decisions based on empathy or um, concern for the people. I think it's really been economic. Hmm. Okay, I hear what you're saying, and I'm not a spokesperson, please, for the UCP party. I'm just wanting to get that out of the way. Um, right. It's a good question. It's a very good question. <laughs> oh, thank you. Um, let's talk a little bit about the press as the press releases we get every afternoon with Dr. And so she is a medical doctor. She mm -hmm. is very well experienced and knowledgeable. She is also a woman like you and I, mm -hmm. and she's very, very, very clever. Could it be that the general science is wrong or how is she so, how is the message from Pop Butter and Dr. Dina Inshore so, yeah, at opposite ends, it's it, it can be confusing. Very, it's very confusing. To be honest, I am very confused. Um, and not being a scientist, I will say that um, I do have a, a master's degree, so I have a little bit of an academic understanding of how the scientific process works. And I think, based on everything that I've read, the the majority of science aligns with Pop Alberta. Um, and the people who 
are outliers really I don't I don't nest I don't really understand why um, particularly in her position why she would make those choices um, what's an example well for, I mean schools um, right now people are saying that this is the the most aggressive virus possibly that humanity has ever faced which is a very lofty thing to say um, However, we're already seeing uh, evidence of teachers and students being sick, not being able to come in, and it's only it's only the second day, um, and many many of the children are still not vaccinated because they're not they haven't finished uh, testing that the vaccine for the small children, and so from from my perspective. I, it I, it seems to come down to values, and I I think that Pop Alberta is really driven by keeping the most people safe and keeping the most people healthy. And because they're frontline workers, they're seeing every day what it what is happening to the sick people, and that it's not it's not just a matter of getting a getting a flu for two weeks and then you get better. It has real long term consequences that haven't been studied yet. So um, I, I'm i not sure. I think her decision making is coming from a different place. Um, I can't comment on her uh, credentials or anything like that, but it seems to be a very different philosophy. Incredible. Well, thank you, Kirsten, Kirsten for that. As Pop Alberta tried to sit with Dr. Dina Encho, the leadership of the UCP, like um, the Premier, to show them what, how, how different the data you're looking at. Because what you're saying is they probably both have the same data, but the conclusions they're getting out of it are different. Mm -hmm. Have you reached out to the UCP in any way? I think in many ways, yes. So they're, they're very early on was were different types of campaigns to uh, phone and write letters to government officials. I believe some of our members have tried to personally connect and in, have invited them to tour the hospitals with them to, to see what it's like to invite the premier and in, invite ministers and uh, various government officials to come into the space and see for themselves what's happening because it's... Um, really quite stressful and the the resources are uh there's challenges from all kinds of angles and now the healthcare workers are also getting sick so um yes i would say that they've made effort but there has not been much of a response uh they haven't really acknowledged it to be honest um could even say that maybe they've been um, on occasion kind of messing with us a little bit by uh, <laughs> scheduling their their briefings at the same time as ours and that kind of thing. I mean, you oh, can't do that for sure, but it, it does sometimes seem a little bit spiteful. And, you know, I can't speak to the the inner workings. As I said, I'm I'm a person who's helping out the team. So um, I really don't know um, internally what that could be like. But um, yes, I would say that certainly efforts have been made to, okay. to reach out. Now, when I look at the caliber of the people you invite on your panels at Pop or Butter, they are the de la cream of the de la cream, like top doctors. Doctors, you know, who know what they're talking about. And so sometimes I, I just wonder, do you feel that Pop Alberta caters to an elitist group who just want a certain order of mm -hmm. things? Because let's face it, they are the Della Cream and they tell the rest of us what to do. And maybe like minions, we have to listen to them or maybe not. But um, when you pack doctors, 
it's so hard for us to media to get any kind of doctor you guys have like all of a lot of them every time consistently like um maybe in a way you're trying to change the discourse or the narrative but do you feel in a way that um that Papa Bara may be catering to to an elitist demographic i just wanted to ask you that it's a great question um and i can understand from a perspective of someone in the public who uh doesn't have access to doctors i know you know i i'm not fancy <laughs> i i grew up in the city i know what that's like um it could seem that way but i really don't think so i think that um it really comes from a genuine place of concern and it's um it's completely voluntary. So I know, um, and many of the same people were people who came to help out with the, this protest in the spring, or sorry, it was summertime still, not spring. Um, but uh, they're just concerned citizens who, um, because of their position, maybe have a little bit louder of a voice and are lending that to try to get the message out. Um, but I, I genuinely do believe that it, they are doing this work with the interests of the public in mind. They, they want to see people stay well and safe. Absolutely, and I agree. Um, when, we talk, when we talk about staying well and staying safe, there are two battles here. The battle against the anti-vaxxers Mm -hmm. And the battle against the government, which do you think um, is the easier battle to win? Ooh, the easier one. Well, I think anti-vaxxers as, I mean, I'm not a political scientist. <laughs> I wish that I could, you know, comment on that more broadly. But I actually don't think that they're a very large group. I think that um, the sort of, there's a difference between anti-vax and vaccine hesitant. And there are many people who are just concerned and they don't know who to trust and rightfully so, because all of this information is coming at them and it's hard to know um, because we're supposed to trust our government. But at the same time, um, it has been really apparent that the government has eroded our trust. And so, um, I think probably the most difficult is changing the mind of the government because um, well they they have the power and the authority to to make a difference and to to choose something different. Um, whereas citizens who um, have a different set of beliefs that's, I mean, we're probably not going to change their minds, but I also just don't think it's a very large group. Mm. Mm. It seems, I mean, I, I could be wrong, but I think it's, there are extremists, and we, I, we saw that in the federal election this year, um, things that I haven't seen before in Canada um, in, in terms of, you know, throwing rocks at the prime minister and uh, <laughs> all kinds of behavior <laughs> that um, I remember. Yeah. And so, yeah, that's, that's a problem, but. Um, so you reckon the anti-vaxxers or a small group, we can, you know, the battle to turn them may not be as fierce as dealing with the with the government yeah, of the day. I think if the if the government chose a different stance and if they were yeah. more consistent, consistent with the federal government and with Health Canada and um, messaging from other health organizations, then some of those people would probably be persuaded. But also a lot of a lot of the other people who are afraid, I think that's a much bigger group who are just working people who don't have the right information. Um, if there were more consistent messaging, a lot more people would 
be persuaded to be vaccinated or to wear masks or take those types of measures. Yeah. So I'll, I'll do get the common people like common Edmontonians, Albertans to listen to Papa Butter's message. Um, interesting. It was a very, um, it happened very quickly, a lot through social media. Um, within a couple of days of doing the first briefing in September, that the Twitter account exploded um, at up to, I think we had 10,000 followers within the first few days. So I think that really speaks to the appetite for this information and that many people had shared the same frustrations and were um, really happy that there were some experts coming forward to try to help. Um, I also think that we have a couple of known people that helped us out. As you mentioned, um, so Dr. Joe Vipond was of course one person who uh, in Calgary was had for a long time been calculating his own numbers because he he saw some discrepancies and so he had already gathered a following and um, Albert Nobbs from the Albert Activist Collective already had certain people that were interested in what he was doing. So it was a matter of these sort of influential people also coming together and combining uh, their different resources to build something. And that has been a really interesting thing to watch because um, it's been kind of a dream team of people with different areas of expertise. Um, and it's been very satisfying, I think, to, to take part in that as well. Um, it's helped me channel a lot of frustration and helped me feel like I'm contributing to something bigger. Yes. Yes, of course. And this was the altruistic um, sentiments I got from my chat with Albert. Um, mm -hmm. It was so very powerful indeed. And I appreciate it. So what happens to Pop Alberta? Say, for example, the COVID-19 developed legs and decided to walk away or developed mm -hmm. wings and flew away. Um, do you think that me would even ever happen? Um, well, uh, it sure would be great if it would. Um, I think that uh, based on what I've learned from the very intelligent people at Pop Alberta, it is possible to, to really, really reduce it to the point where it could eventually become uh, endemic as they, they sometimes try to say. We are not there right now. Um, so the philosophy has just been that we will continue until the work is done. And w if that, if the pandemic ever is finished, then it would be probably not quite the same, but I can still see people continuing with other causes. I know that there's um, concerns about the curriculum, for example, that would be another area of concern that they might be interested in taking on, or um, the coal mining proposals in the Rocky Mountains. Um, there are a number of things that I think are really common concerns that Albertans have for their future, um, particularly with the lack of funding and the lack of resources for all of these things that are really core to the experience of being out it, a person who lives in Alberta. Kirsten, if you ask me, I, I'd say Pop Alberta gives civic engagement a new definition. It, um, it, it stretches um, our belief system and it maybe even encourages us to, to see that some good can happen when people work together and different people work together. And I, I'm beginning to see that this is really what Pop Alberta is about. 
Um, it's not just um, rebellion for the sake of it. It's rebellion. Maybe not even rebellion. That's how I describe what not Albert was doing. It is civic engagement on a on a different on a different level. Yes, which which was enabled because we have a government that does not listen. A government the only time they listen is when the public mm-hmm. <laughs> shout a lot. Yeah. And, you know, we we did see a little bit of success um, from the rallies in August. And I know I talked to many people. Uh, so we rallied from August 1st. I think it was 12 or 14 days. I would have to verify until they announced, okay, we're going to uh, repeal this decision that we made or revoke it rather. Um, which was great, which was amazing. But I know that, and there were many, many people who came every day and said, I have never come to a rally like this before, but I will do it and I will continue to do it until we can ensure that uh, the children are safe, essentially. It was many, many grandparents, grandmothers, we saw a lot of, um, and, uh, parents came with their children, there were teachers, there were uh, nurses, doctors, just just really a variety of citizens coming together to say, um, you know, we, this is not acceptable to us and we have to do something about it. Um, and yes, yeah, civic engagement, I think in Alberta has, and Canada overall is really not that strong compared to a lot of places in the world. And I think that there's, we're in such a turbulent time as we're learning more about our colonial history. Um, I think it's really, really important for, for people to be informed and for people to have ways of engaging that represents them. Because I, I mean, our government's really only they seem to represent a very specific group of people. Um, and I know for myself, I've never really fully felt represented by any government. Um, so something about this process inspired me to think, well, what would a government look like that that did work for me? And, and how can we try to make that happen? Um, and that that is a really inspiring thing to see to see people coming together to decide we're going to try to change something. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, to be honest, I I do not know what I was expecting from this conversation. And between us, I I probably look my 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 cousin. I've got mm-hmm. uncles that are doctors, and I know how snobbish they are. So when I think about doctors, I think about my rich uncles. Um, and how they can be so not accessible sometimes. So, but talking to you, I see, I see what you're doing. I appreciate it. I see you are allowing us to talk about the pandemic in a way that is benefiting and uplifting. And you're giving us the platform to channel our energies into something. And I think that that right there is powerful. I think I just got it. Thank you very much. <laughs> I oh, thank you. That's I and that's it. been so wonderful. For I I honestly will say though anyone who has participated, um, we have a group chat where you know it it has become kind of a support group as well. Whenever there's something that happens or. Um, just frustrations in the world compared compared to last year where I wasn't doing any of this. I feel so much more connected to what's going on and to other people. And I feel so much more supported. Um, and I really would encourage anyone who's frustrated to try to find some, find people. There are people out there who have the same concerns. You really aren't alone and you can get together and do something. And even if it's, even if you can't do much, 
even if it's just a, a phone call or an email or, um, you know, write a blog or do what you're doing. Um, everyone has unique talents. And I think that um, when we combine those things, that's where we get real impact is when people work together. And um, I think that's something that's really lacking in Canada, to be honest. Amen. <laughs> well, you we go and preach a go. <laughs> we need more community. We always have. Um, and uh, so hopefully this is just the start of of something mm. shifting for for everyone. Oh wow. Um before I let you go, I want you to to talk to us about what parents want to know when they send their questions. What sort of questions do you get the most? And how can people join this support? So it's not just Pop or Better, it's also a support network. It's also yeah. a group of people who are like-minded. How can people join? How can they support Pop or Better? Well, um, I would say, I mean, there's there's the um, the briefings that are online, but I think that that only reaches the people that are on the internet or who are interested in seeking that information. So I think what you can also do is, is talk to your family, talk to your friends and family. And it doesn't have to be um, trying to pressure someone to, to, you know, do something that they don't want to do, but to engage them in conversations and say, Hmm, you know, but have you have you considered this or I learned something new um, and and try to share that with them? Because I think um, people are scared. And um, so to answer your question about some of the more frequent questions, it often is a, is um, what it comes down to is people are concerned about their family. Um, and that, that's why I got involved in the end was and that has been my biggest concern through the whole pandemic was, um, you know, I have older parents. Um, don't tell them I said that. <laughs> um, my dad doesn't like that. But, um, you know, and my brother is a teacher and he has children as well. And it became very personal for me when when there was a very real threat of my family becoming sick and that that is what ultimately made me just decide to do something about it um but yeah i i think that that's generally what people are worried about is um how how to balance um their personal well-being and not wanting to be isolated and also making sure that their family is safe and um, they they want the best thing for their children. And what's the best way to do that? They don't know. Um, and it's been especially confusing now talking about mental health um, because that's a whole a whole topic that we just don't know enough about if, from the perspective of the general public. I think. We don't talk about it enough. There are not a, a great deal of resources about it. So people don't necessarily understand, okay, what are the mental health needs of a, of a child going to school? And is it really, you know, if they're, to me, them being in danger of physical harm, it seems like worse danger than them not going to school for a little bit. Um, it has been a long time and that, is also really challenging because many people can't find childcare and they can't afford to keep their children home. So it is complicated. Um, yeah. But, and that's, that's part of one of the things that they're advocating for as well is to support families so that they can make these choices. Oh, wow. Oh, wow, Kirsten, like my word, we, you know, we could spend one whole hour here just, just going, talking. Um, but 
I will have to let you go now because I I know your time is precious. You are on the very powerful communications team at Protect Our Province, Alberta, Pop Alberta. And I want to thank you so much for your wisdom, for taking the time to break what you do at Pop Alberta to 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 someone that was a commoner like myself. So I'm really grateful for your time today. So I'm going to end the broadcast. I'm going to ask you to stay for 30 seconds. Of course. Um, don't, go, don't go away, Kirsten. So sure. there you have it. We hope the conversation was juicy enough for you. My, I feel so empowered and enabled, and I cannot wait for um, the next conversation. So thanks for watching. See you next time.